Hey everyone, welcome back to Leela's Tools. Glad you're here. So, we have another tool haul today. And uh, just before we get right into it, I uh, just wanted to say a huge shout out to everyone that's been supporting the channel lately. We just hit 70 subscribers. It means a lot to me. And uh, also we got a bit of a new camera angle, a little uh, jig I set, I set up myself. I'll take a picture of it and post it on the Instagram. Instagram will be linked in the description below if you want to check that out. So without further ado, let's get going here. So before I forget, let's start the stuff in the far back. So I got one of these little stainless steel wire brushes. And I don't know if you guys know, but I'm about 99% sure that these are the snap-on brushes. And this is the company that makes some that I buy. Paint job. There's some info on it. If that helps you. Um, yeah, this is about $4.50 Canadian. And these hold up great. They have a nice handle. And yeah. So if you're looking for a good wire brush, this is a good one. Uh, another item. I cut the packaging here just so you can see it was new. Pull her out real quick. Shrink plastic wrap on it. So this here is a Lyle seal puller. Here's your part number. 56750. And I've been looking to get a seal puller for a while. And uh, I was looking at OEM Tools one, but this one really caught my fancy, especially because, look down there. I mean, the good old US of A. And this has got a real beefy feel to it. If you get a a Snap-on or Matco uh, seal puller. It's just the Lyle rebranded. And this was only $12, I believe. Steal of a deal. For the amount I'll use it, this should last me a lifetime. And if it doesn't, well, $12. And also, I've had to warranty with Lyle before. Literally just emailed them. Uh, I'm not sure if I got a response or not, but the tool that I asked about in warranty, it showed up at my door in about four or five days. So, definitely a great company. Okay, so let's go over this guy. Look at this big wrench. It's a dreadnought, inch and a quarter, and the other end is an inch and seven sixteenths. So for a wrench, this is now my biggest wrench I own. I have uh, sockets up to two inch, but that's my biggest wrench now. That's cool. Alloy steel, made in Canada. And if you guys remember, I found out so that anything dreadnought was made by Grey Tools Canada. So. It's very interesting. That's a nice wrench. Also, um, anything here that looks super clean, it's because it's been through the evaporist and the wire brush. This is a Proto Canada inch and a sixteenth combination wrench. Look how nice and that is. See, it has some sort of uh, goo on it here. That the ends clean up nice. <clears throat> so there that guy is. <coughs> Pardon my cough, I'm just getting over a bit of a cold, got the sniffles a little. And the combination wrench is a Challenger by Proto, Canada. I don't think these are honestly much different than the standard uh, Protos, but I, it was like their cheaper line, just like a, a Blue Point or whatnot, but these aren't made in China or Taiwan. Uh, another find is a one inch combination wrench, a PNC USA. Cleaned up real nice. Uh, here we go, another uh, Dreadnought, made in Canada, Molybdenum, 11 sixteenths, 9 sixteenths. I love the, the finish that these come up with after the Aperus, they sort of, even after you white brush them, they're always a bit darker, and I think it's the Molybdenum, I'm not sure, but I believe that's what it is, and it's just different, you can see someone had a grinder on it at some point for some reason, like grinding the edge down, or maybe that's factory, no, it's not, you can see the numbers are gone. Interesting. This is a new tool for me. Anyone knows about this, I'd love to hear about it. Actually, this one I, I bled for. The edges on this are real sharp, and I was wire brushing, my finger slipped. Oh, you can see it right there on my thumb. Went and sliced me right there. So, blood, sweat, and tears went into restoring this guy. It was real rough. You can see some of the pitting there. But this is a Fairmont. My kitty's at the door, if you can hear that. Um, yes. Oh, hold, hold on. You know kitties. Come on. You come in? There we go. 
Oh, now you want back out? See, he's always, you always got to have a shop cat. And as much as you love them, they'll drive you insane. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't know this brand at all. It seems of a, a quality, definitely not a China Taiwanese tool. It's got the old school casting lines. And there's no markings of sizes on here. I haven't measured it. It's just interesting. So there's that guy. <laughs> Look at the finish on this beauty. This is an ETF. No markings in the back. This is a Canadian made wrench. 15 sixteenths one inch. This would be great for your hydraulic fittings this size uh, more double open ends got a gray Canada 13 16 7 16 clean up nice it's the standard combination wrench gray Canada 5 8 well you want to be on camera you want to say hi to the camera shop kitty say hi to the camera me <laughs> Oh, this video is going to go viral now. There's a cat in it, right? Uh, we got a Challenger of Canada. Old school, 916ths. Another Challenger of Canada. I believe I'm getting close to a full set of these with this exact branding on it. This is a half inch. This one cleaned up real nice. I don't think this has ever been used. But this is a drop forged Hoppa guaranteed 3 8 Nice little wrench. You see that they're heavily like almost a Chinese kind of quality. You see the like the broaching and stuff on there and how thick it is. It's kind of you know, not what you'd really expect, but they seem of quality. They don't want to bend in your hand or anything, which is always nice. And it's definitely a collector's piece. Look at this cute little guy, quarter inch fedora, old school one made in India. <sighs> Uh, this is a fine, and look at the finish on this. It's just gorgeous. One of my favorite wrenches I own, I think. This Walter. Beautiful German wrench. 1013. Look at that finish. I like this one a lot. So there's that guy. Um, this guy I put a lot of work into. Um... And let me know, is that a common thing on these old Crestaloy Crescent wrenches where they don't want to close like this? Because, like, I could force it a bit and then it wants to pop back. Oh, like that. I, I spent time filing this and cleaning it. And, I mean, it still definitely works. But if I once I get it to the end, I don't want to push it any farther or else it gets locked up. But, yeah, and, I mean, I filed on the jaws a bit. They, they've been, you know, it's slipped. I believe this is bent. You see how that... If I rotate it back now, we go forward. See that? Let me know if anyone knows about that. That's just another one to add to the collection. This is one of my favorite of uh, this haul. This knife here. So the first thing that caught my eye was this hook. I've seen Scout Crafter's video where he has a knife that he carries and he's walking and it has a hook like this. He doesn't like it. That's fine, but it you know as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh, this is gonna be you know cool, some sort of old knife. And I looked at it, and I was like, oh, well, this is nice. So oh, it's a folding knife. But someone took the time to go and put a nice weld on there. And look at the the name on here. This is a come on, focus. It's a Cutmaster from Utica, New York, U.S. of A. I like this a lot. So if you know, like, is this specific knife, is it uh, collectible, uh, when is it from, that kind of thing, let me know. Definitely nice little shop knife. Tiny little uh, lady slipper pry bar. Can never have enough things to pry with. Uh, another one of these German-made glass cutters. This one's with a green handle. Looks identical to the other ones I've gotten. This one is a... Uh, Diamantor. Interesting name. Oh, you can barely see it on here. I don't know if you can see the hexagon here. The A. This is a Viha or Weha. This is just a T handle Allen. Uh, I mean, not worth a whole lot, but this is actually, as much as I know about uh, Viha tools, this is actually my first one uh, to have in hand, so I'm happy to have that. Uh, these here 
are uh, some side cutters. Very different look to them. They don't cut very well. Um, what is that on there? These are Victor. Number 719, I believe. I don't really know much about these. Got the beautiful details on the handles. Just another collector's piece, not a user, that one. <coughs> this one I had never heard of. She did a bit of Googling. This is a... Oh, it's, it's hard to make out even myself. It's a Will Tools. And it is at the bottom. If you can make that out. It's W Germany, West Germany. So old uh, West Germany made side cutter. And this one actually does cut pretty good. I mean, as long as you're in the right spot. You can see it's not uh, perfect by any means, but it does cut. It's still sharp. Uh, this is one of my, I think, a second pair. Diamond brand pliers. Just a slip joint. It's interesting if you see it. Sort of like, uh, it's like they're almost like uh, nickel plated brass or something. They're very gold underneath. It's interesting. Yeah, you could never have enough plier slip joints. <laughs> uh, this is a brand new item I got. This is a Vera Phillips number two laser tip screwdriver. Phillips two by 100 mil. There it is, and you have a look at that tip. I actually uh, compared this to my personal favorite screwdriver, my uh, Vessel Impacta. This is a Japanese-made screwdriver, the Japanese Industrial Standard Number no. 2 end. And these uh, hold about the same in a Phillips fastener. The, I haven't found any other screwdrivers that hold as good as these two. So, always happy to get a quality tool like this Vera. And there's the part number if you're interested. Bottom there. Uh, now we got a bunch of screwdrivers to go over. We got two Exolites. Was at one point owned by a Mr. William Nugget, I'm assuming. Did a little clean up. You could see where I sanded on the shaft and not the tip a bit. Um, yeah, these are in great shape. This is a little Phillips number one. Very comfortable handle. I like the smooth down here. Get torque, get some spin action going on. So there's that guy, and I got its, well, great uncle. This one's got, uh, where was it? Different uh, name on it. H C H B M E T. I don't know. Anyway, this is a Phillips number two. It's quite long. It's nice. Tips in good shape overall. And we got a few real scores here. Look at this beauty. Ball and Allen, 10 millimeter bond hoose, made in America. And actually, I believe it was uh, one of these was bent, but I was able to straighten it out perfectly. And uh, this one's in great shape. Don't run into a lot of 10 millimeter uh, hex Allens, but. Sure will one day. Uh, get some more ball and hex. Uh, this is a five sixteenths bone hoose. Uh, here we have a quarter inch bond hoose. And I know most people would say like bond hus, bond bond hus. It's uh. I'm Scandinavian, I'm from Norway, and it's just the way I pronounce things. It's like a lot of people around here for their snowmobiles, ATVs, they say uh, Polaris, and I say Polaris. It's just, you know, we all say things a little differently, right? This is a, I believe it's a 3 16 little guy. <coughs> and a 530 seconds. 30 seconds is actually uh, I don't deal with a lot of SAE hex in general but this is one of the most common I do deal with some of the old uh, in-ground sprinklers use these uh, here nothing special by any means this is a benchmark brand uh, for you that 
If you guys that don't know, this is from a store called Home Hardware we have here in Canada. Uh, uh, what, what would it be considered uh, to, like, your... Uh, it's like a miniature Lowe's, let's just say. Um, oh, how did I tighten this down? Oh, there we go. I was turning it the wrong way. But yeah, I cleaned up nice. I, t I spent a lot of time on the, the jaw here. Cleaned it up nice. Didn't really do anything on here. Just degreased it. But this is great to just have as like a, a literal like beater tool. Use it, abuse it, bang on stuff with it. This was two bucks. This is a heavy piece of cast iron and steel. And this was also two bucks. Now these pretty much, I don't care if you buy the Stanley, the Arrow, heck even the Blue Point one off the Snap-on truck, they're all the same and they're all junk. They all break eventually. The inside where the where it pinches the rivets, it just gets messed up, and then it stops pinching them, and gets clogged, and it's just hell. But this was two bucks, and the last one I had broke. So there we go. So guys, oh, see, look at that, I'm going to miss stuff again. This was a score, and a full stamp set. I believe this was five bucks. These... Uh, the cheapest I've ever seen them, I think, was 25 or 30 So, five bucks. Very happy with that. It's got its cap there. Get on there. Camera. There. So, got that set. Uh, and then we'll just go over the sockets here. Uh, this is in rough shape. You see how pitted that is. It's just a SK quarter inch extension. I don't like a lot of these older SKs as users. They don't have any undercuts for a uh, ball detent, so they just come right off. I'll just quickly show you. So this is my Gear Wrench 120XP ratchet. And if we go to the ball detent here, you can see it doesn't really matter where we put it. It just comes right off. See that? Now I just grab a extension out of here. What's this? Uh... Uh, an Ultra Pro from Napa, you can see the, the undercuts. So when you put that on, it actually takes some force to get it off. So that's one thing with these old SKs. I still pick them up, add to the collection. Uh, a few sockets to show you. Uh, this is a, I can't quite read it. I can tell though, it's Sheffield, England. And it is a 11.30 seconds AF, uh, British World War II era fastener, uh, the AF standard. I'm not, I think that might have been Air Force, not sure. Uh, this is uh, a find, Got some grinding marks on it. This is a Mac Tools, uh, 3 8 quarter drive deep, 12 point. I uh, have the uh, 9 16 equivalent of this, so, and uh, building up that set. Got some Indestros here. Uh, six point uh, three eighths and a half inch twelve point. What else we have? Oh, it's SK Wayne twelve point three quarter and a Indestro. 5 8 12 point and an Indestro 12 point 11 sixteenths. Oh, three more. Hang in with me, guys. Beautiful uh, short <clears throat> half inch extension. Ultra Pro brand from Napa. Very similar to your Carlisle. And uh, this is a Challenger Canada half inch 12 point 11 sixteenths. And this here is a P and C. 11 sixteenths tall point. It's quite rough. So yeah, there's the haul, guys. Sorry it took so long. If you enjoyed, uh, please uh, leave a like and subs consider subscribing if you want to see more. I thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Take it easy.